and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just a few years ago, my mother started running marathons. She decided one day to start training for these longer races, and since then she now has a few marathon finishes under her belt. She is now in her early 60s. The last race she ran, she was the oldest participant, and she's not done. She has a half marathon scheduled for next month. <coughs> And I think she's crazy. <laughs> and I say that in the most loving way possible. But I think she's crazy. I run to stay in shape, but I have no desire to push myself to that limit for hours on end, dealing with the physical pain and the psychological stress of running 26.2 miles all at once. But although I think my mom's a little crazy for doing what she is doing, I'm gotta respect what she's doing. It's impressive not only that she started running these kinds of marathons at that weight age, but that she keeps doing it again and again. It can't be easy. Marathons aren't easy for anyone. Marathon runners talk about hitting a wall during the race. And what they mean is, as you're running, there's a point where your body just does not want to go any farther. And so if you can just fight through that wall, you can make it to the end. And of course, a marathon is not the most extreme of races either. You've, you've got the Ironman competition, where athletes swim 2.4 miles through open water, and then they bike 112 miles, and then they finish the race with a full marathon. Out here, we have the Hard Rock 100, starting and ending in Silverton, going up and over the mountains, over 33,000 feet in elevation gain. Runners are traversing a 100.5 mile course. There are other races around the world that stretch the mind and the bodies of athletes to the limits. And sometimes those bodies shut down and a runner collapses to the ground. And sometimes the minds of those athletes shut down and they just can't make their bodies take another step. And sometimes those athletes get disqualified for breaking the rules or for stepping outside of the course. Because it's no secret that running long distances like that is hard. It is extremely difficult to complete such a, a long, grueling, strenuous course it takes not only physical stamina, but a determination and a grit and a drive to press on no matter what is happening to slow you down. And so is it, is it any surprise to us that the Bible compares this life to a race? and not a 100 meter sprint either. This race is a marathon or something even more extreme, a long, grueling, strenuous course that takes determination and grit and drive to press on. Because this life isn't easy, is it? This life is, is not just a, a pleasant stroll through a shaded park with a wind rustling through leaves. This, this life is a marathon. With the wind whipping around you and the sun beats down, the slope is steep, the path is uneven, the obstacles are intimidating, and the length of the race itself can be overwhelming at times. Not sure, there are some pleasant moments and some easy times throughout your lives, but, but those brief seconds of respite don't make the hard stretches any more enjoyable. And there are plenty of difficult stretches in this life, aren't there? As you kind of look back at the part of the course that you have run so far, there are undoubtedly 
plenty of ugly moments in your life just like there are plenty of ugly moments in mine. Times when you just wanted to quit. Situations where you stopped running, you sat down, and you kind of wallowed in self-pity. Days or weeks or maybe entire years when your rebellious streak got the better of you and you just refused to follow the rules. And you refused to stay in between the lines and you refused to do what you knew you shouldn't be doing because you just didn't care. If we take it back, and if we take a look back on the race that we have run so far, and we, and we are honest about how we have run it, our past is filled with penalties and faults and infractions, even one of which disqualifies us for the prize. And it's not as if we don't really know about our violations. The rules are clear. God has very plainly set out the parameters of the race. In His Word, He tells us what the regulations are and the consequences for breaking every one of them. When God says, during this race, kindness and love and patience and forgiveness are not just optional, they are required, He means it. When God says, during this race, what you want and what you need should never overrule what everyone else wants and what everyone else needs, He means it. When God says you should never veer to the right or to the left, when God says you should always be going in a straight line, when God says you are always supposed to be following all the rules, He means it. And He knows when you mess up, He sees every misstep. He's right there every time you intentionally or unintentionally cross the line. You can't hide anything from Him, and so you can't get away with anything either. The Lord knows how poorly you have run this race so far, and He's well aware of how pitifully my performance has been too. I haven't run a clean race. But just the opposite. I, I trip myself up every day. I lose focus. I wander out of my lane. I don't know what I'm doing. And, and what's worse is when I purposely do it. When I, when I just don't feel like going down the path. When I want to turn off in my own direction for my own reasons without any regard for what my Lord wants. And, and what are the consequences? With this kind of attitude? Well, the consequences are finishing the race, but not in the winner's circle. Finishing the race, but on the losing side. Finishing the race, but forfeiting the prize of heaven and replacing it with that ugly and nasty place called the hell. This life is not a practice run. There's no second chances either. Right now we are in the middle of the real thing and it really is a matter of life and death. The Apostle Paul knew how serious this race is. Because his past was not too pretty either. Paul, if you remember, was an accomplice to murder. Paul took the lead in hunting Christians down and then throwing them in jail. Paul was really a government-sanctioned terrorist of those who believed in Jesus as their Savior. And so when he looked back at the race he had brought thus far, it was nothing like commendable. In fact, it was atrocious. It was unspeakably appalling. And yet, Paul was completely confident that he would finish this race victorious anyway. Not because he somehow had earned the prize, 
but because he knew Jesus had already earned it for him. Yeah, Paul's past was a mess. But the prize was already his. Listen to what he says to the congregation in Philippi. You can follow along if you like at the top of page 13. Paul says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. As Paul ran the race of his life, he was able to forget what was behind him. All the bad things he had done, all the persecutions that he was responsible for, all the innocent people he had thrown in jail, the martyr Stephen that he watched being murdered, and strained toward what was in front of him. And he was able to leave his past behind him because he knew that Jesus had already taken care of his mess. Jesus had already forgiven him for everything he had ever done and everything he ever would do before Paul even knew it. Jesus has cleaned up your mess too. Jesus has forgiven everything you have ever done and anything you ever will do. And he did that by coming down to this earth and actually running the race that you're running right now. Jesus had to traverse the same long, grueling, strenuous course that you are running right now, but He did it perfectly. He didn't once slip. He didn't once stumble. He didn't once veer off to the right or to the left. Step after step, day after day, year after year, He was perfectly in line with His Father's will and he finished the race without a single fault to his name. But here's the strange part. When Jesus crossed the finish line, he didn't take the credit for it. When Jesus crossed the finish line, he didn't grab the prize. Instead, he turned around and he grabbed you. And he took his number off his back and he put it on yours and he took your number off your back they slapped it on his so that he would be blamed for what you did. And so that he would be penalized for your infractions. That's what the cross is all about. The cross is the consequence. The cross is the finale for anyone who fails to run this race flawlessly. But not you. And not me. Jesus has already taken the cross for us. And through faith in Him as our Savior, we now have His number on our backs. The number of the winner. The number of the champion. The number of the one who won the prize. And so right now, as we speak, the prize is already ours. The prize of heaven is is ours right now. We're in the middle of the race, of course. We're still running. We're still struggling. We're still trying to deal with the ins and the outs that this life throws at us. But our victory is guaranteed. Jesus has already made sure that He won the prize and the prize is waiting for us at the finish line. And so whenever we finish, it's ours. However we finish, we win. Whether we sprint across the line, jog across the line, or get across the line crawling on our hands and knees as Christians, as God's children, as people who believe in Jesus as our Savior, the prize is ours. It does not matter how messy or how sloppy our race has been. When we cross the finish line, we will all be standing in the winner's circle with Jesus Himself 
because of Jesus himself. And the faith he has given us to believe in him. So press on. No matter what this race of life is like, press on just like Paul did. Listen one more time to his words. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal, for the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul knew what was waiting for him at the finish line. You know what is waiting for you at the finish line. You know that Jesus has set eternity aside for you. And you know that many of the people that are running this race with you right now are going to be there with you in paradise because you're not running this race alone. We're all in this together. Which is how many people in marathons run. They, they run it together. They have someone to go with them side by side down the course so that they can encourage one another and support one another and pick each other up. They run side by side so that they can give each other that needed boost of energy and encouragement when one starts falling behind. And of course the goal is not to finish ahead of the person you're running with. The goal is not to leave that person behind. The goal is not to get a better time. The goal in a marathon is just to finish and to make sure that the person you're running with crosses that finish line as well. Look around you. You've got some great brothers and sisters in Christ that are running this race with you right now. People who encourage you and support you and make sure that you're continuing to point in the right direction. But you're here for them too. You are here to encourage and support them too because sometimes you're going to be the strong one. Sometimes you're going to be the steady one. Sometimes you're going to be the Christian upon whom they are going to need to lean. Take every advantage of those opportunities to help those Christians whose legs might be a little rubbery, whose lungs might be burning, and whose throat might be dry. Because we're all in this together. And we want to see them finish that race. We're going to need each other in the coming days and weeks and months and years. There have been plenty of twists and turns in our lives leading up to this point, as you well know. 